If you have ever worked with discrete probability distributions, you'll be familiar with the term expected value. That definition generalizes to continuous probability distributions. In both the discrete and continuous case, the expected value, also called the mean, written with the Greek letter mu, is a generalization of the concept of an average. Essentially, if you could perform the experiment infinitely many times and average those infinitely many outcomes, what would that average be? Well, this concept is defined for both discrete and continuous random variables, but for discrete random variables, you don't require the tools of calculus to define the expected value. So that's not an appropriate definition for us to give here. Instead, we'll look at a continuous random variable on an interval. And again, one or both of these might be infinite. So this interval might be finite, might be infinite. Whatever the interval is, we have a probability density function, P of x. And the expected value is defined to be the integral of x times p of x. If we just gave the definition, this would be a pretty brief video, which is fine, but let's do an example as well. Let's find the expected value of this exponentially decreasing memoryless probability distribution. It's a probability distribution on the entire real numbers, even though the probability of getting a negative number is zero. According to this definition, the expected value should be the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of x p of x dx. Now, an improper integral like this needs to be broken into two improper integrals. In principle, it doesn't matter where the break occurs, but this piecewise defined function has a very natural break point. We'll break the, this apart at zero. 
And the advantage of choosing zero as our breakpoint is that for this first integral from negative infinity to zero, p of x is zero. So we get to that. And from zero to infinity, x is greater than or equal to zero, and we have this. And one of these integrals is easy to deal with. Whether it's over a finite or infinite region, the integral of zero is zero. So we're only left with one function that requires actual effort. And let's see what we see. X times an exponential. This looks like integration by part to me. Because when you take the derivative of x, you get something nice and simple. You get 1. And when you integrate this, you still have something simple. You still have an exponential function. And integration by parts work well if you've got a product and one term of the product becomes simpler when you differentiate it and the other term does not become more complicated. And that's precisely the situation that we're in now. Let's take this C and just pull it out of the integral. And we are probably going to have to go on to a second page, but I'll valiantly make the effort to complete this all here. The indefinite integral, ignore the limits for the moment, will let you be x and dv be e to the negative cx. Then du is 1. And v is the antiderivative of dv. So negative 1 over c. e to the negative cx. u v is negative 1 over c x e to the negative cx minus the integral of v du
this negative sign and this negative sign will cancel and we get negative one over C X E to the negative C X minus one over C squared E to the C X. And I pulled the C out. So we've got a C in front of this. And that C, of course, will cancel this and partially cancel that. So we've got the limit as K goes to infinity. of this evaluated from zero to k. And in spite of my best efforts, let's go to a clean sheet of paper. I recopied that last formula. I wrote it a little differently. Remember that having negative powers is the same as a positive power in the denominator. Now we'll stick K in for X and we'll stick zero in for X and we'll subtract. And this is what we get. As k goes to infinity, well, there aren't any k's in this term, so this doesn't do anything. As k goes to infinity here, the denominator goes to infinity. The numerator is constant. So that whole thing is zero. This is um, unclear as k goes to infinity. The numerator goes to infinity and the denominator goes to infinity. But in that situation, we have a tool we can use, L'Hopital's rule. K is going to infinity. We're treating k as our variable here. So when we take the derivative, it will be as if k is our variable. So the derivative of k is not to zero. It would be zero if k were a constant. The derivative of the variable k is one. We've taken the derivative of the numerator. We repeat with the denominator. And this limit is zero. The denominator is going to infinity. The numerator is going to one, a constant over infinity is zero. And we get that as our expected value.
Returning to an example we've looked at earlier, if you are fishing and X is the number of hours it takes to land your first fish, you might expect to see a probability density function that looks something like this. This two is our C. So on average, you'd expect it to take about half an hour before you land a fish.